Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play, Kilo India 5 Echo November Whiskey. In today's video, I'm going to go through all the main features of SDR Connect. Now, I want you to be aware that uh, for time reasons, it's not possible to go through every feature in great detail. So I refer you to the SDR Connect page at sdrplay.com, where there are links to many other videos that go into the various features in more detail. Now, if you've already been using SDR Connect and have uh, become used to some of the features from the first public preview releases, you may just want to skip through the first part of this video and go closer to the end where I cover the new features that have recently added, including the uh, multiplex auxiliary spectrum and the frequency module, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. If you look at the description below this video, you will see chapter markers so you can easily step forward just towards the end of the video and see what's new. Here is a list of the features of SDR Connect that we're going to cover in today's video. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. So once again, I refer you to the description below this video, which has a list of chapter markers, which means you can easily step forward to any particular feature that you want to review again later. Order and plumbing because they fix pipes. We're talking about emergency plumbing. One of the primary objectives of the redesign was to take the basic user interface and make it clean and uncluttered in appearance. You can see the RF spectrum, beneath it the waterfall, and in the upper right corner the auxiliary spectrum. In addition, we added an audio spectrum display, something that wasn't available in SDR Uno. The company, we're proud of our long history of helping families build the kitchens of their dreams. A control at the top of the screen allows you to access the device hardware settings. Here you can set such things as sample rate, RF gain, so on and so forth. Other controls are displayed in a sidebar which can be collapsed to put it out of the way. Here you can select the various demodulation modes. You can set the uh, AGC, squelch levels and so on. You can select the audio output of the device and various other audio settings. And then finally, near the bottom, you can select the various bands you wish to listen to. Thank you. The holiday starts Another control at the top of the screen allows you to adjust the display settings. Here you can adjust the position and uh, height of the RF spectrum display. You can move the base up and down. You can also uh, adjust the averaging and uh, the gain of the waterfall. If you have an RSP Duo, you'll be pleased to know that diversity tuning is supported. In the lower right of the screen, you see a diversity button. In addition to this, you need to go to the hardware settings for the device and select the toggle for diversity. Once you do this, the circles will appear in the lower right and then you can use your mouse to set the relative phase and amplitude between the two antennas connected. I only have one antenna connected, so I can't fully demonstrate this. Doctor's appointments, grocery shopping. A frequent complaint about SDR Uno was moving all the various windows around the screen. As you can see, they all move together in SDR Connect. But in addition, you can drag any particular window and either dock it to some of the uh, existing windows that are there, or you can just allow it to float on the screen. This will allow you to resize the window. Here, for example, we're looking at AUX SP to get a better look at what's going on. And then if you want to return it, you can drag the window back and dock it back to its original location. Very powerful stuff. Another useful feature is the ability to set up multiple receivers or VRX as we call them. By clicking the plus button at the top of the screen, you can add an additional VRX. Each VRX you add can be tuned independently within the observable spectrum and you have independent volume and mute controls for each. A master mute is also available in the top right corner. Five, six, now remember, what was 
Jeff, number one. Taylor on Jeff, my number nine. Jeff, number one. Lindsay Marie. The the Monday. So much for the basic functionality. But SDR Connect has two very major features that do not exist with SDR Uno. As you may have noticed, it runs on a Mac. Of course, it also runs on Windows. Yes, Linux is supported too. And finally, you can run SDR Connect on a Raspberry Pi. You will notice that regardless of platform, the user interface looks exactly the same. The details on exactly what the hardware and software requirements are for each platform, you can find that information on our website. This was an absolutely tremendous accomplishment from our software team. It was a lot of hard work to achieve this. But wait, there's more. You can also run SDR Connect as a server you start up the server on the machine that your RSP is connected to and then it's possible to connect remotely either from the same machine, another machine on your local network or indeed from another machine across the internet. A control at the top of the screen will allow you to set up various servers. Again, they may be local or they may be across the internet. Once these servers are set up they can be accessed from the device's drop-down in the upper left. A common scenario is to set up a server on something like a Raspberry Pi. With the server running, it is then possible to connect with a local client. This means that you can access your RSP without actually having it physically right next to you. Alternatively, you might want to set up a remote client and that allows you to access the server all the way across the internet. An on-screen keypad has been added at the bottom of the control screen. You can either click to enter numbers for frequency. Alternatively, you can just right-click on the frequency display in the main spectrum window and use your keyboard to directly enter the frequency required. There is a new global settings item which will allow you to select your particular IARU region. This has two effects. It may affect which band select buttons are available in the band select window and in addition for a selected band it will display the correct width of the band corresponding to the region. In the recording window in the lower right, you now have the option to make full IQ recordings in addition to audio. Click on the record button to start your recording and when you're done finish recording, click on the stop button. To play back a recording, first stop the stream and then from the drop down, you can select IQ file. You can then navigate to the location of the recorded file which you can specify also in the settings in the recording window. Open the file and then click on play. You now have an option for playback in the lower right, which will show you the position in the recording. You can make the recording repeat or you can open up a different file for playback. You can even play recordings from SDR Uno. The width of the spectrum in the auxiliary spectrum window in the upper right, which I have detached and I'm enlarging here to make it easier to see, is either defined by the preset filter settings in the control window there, 
Alternatively, you can grab an edge and you can drag it wider or narrower to whatever bandwidth you require. A new control allows for asymmetrical adjustment whereby you can grab either edge and move it in or out, which is extremely useful if you've got some very annoying out-of-band signals. Also in the auxiliary spectrum window, we find another new capability, and that is the ability to add notch filters. Clicking on that control allows you to left click anywhere within the spectrum and create a notch. Once a notch has been created, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to change the width and depth of the notch, or you can use keyboard up and down arrow keys. You can add as many notches as you like just by adding a left click. Alternatively, you can remove notches by mousing over them and using a right click. A very useful capability. If you've been using the earlier preview versions of SDR Connect, you may already be familiar with the audio spectrum option. In this release, we've now added a peak hold functionality to it as well. A third tab has also been added to the display to display the multiplex spectrum. Here you can see the 19 kHz pilot tones, the stereo difference information, and up around 57 kHz the RDS information. This feature should be very useful to those of you that enjoy exploring FM broadcasts. A much anticipated feature of SDR Connect is the ability to store and recall frequencies. The new frequencies module addresses this, appearing somewhat incongruously at the bottom of the screen. If you tune to a frequency and press the star, it saves that frequency. You can continue to tune to other frequencies and a new entry will be created each time you click on the star. As your frequency list grows, you may find it convenient to drag up the window from the bottom to give you a bit more display space for the frequencies you have stored. To recall a frequency, simply double click on the entry and the radio will retune to the selected frequency. Once you have quite a few entries, another feature you'll really enjoy is if you click at the top on the frequency heading, it will now sort them according to frequency, either ascending or descending order as you prefer. I've been busy adding some AM broadcast band frequencies to my list of stored frequencies. However, one thing I would like to point out is, if you have a band framed, for example in this case medium wave, and then you try and recall an FM broadcast frequency, you will see that nothing happens. First you have to go and unframe the band and then it will change to a different band when you recall a safe frequency. Now this is not necessarily ideal and so wouldn't it be better if we could separate our AM broadcast frequencies from our FM broadcast frequencies. At the bottom of the window you will see a tab labeled new list. You can double click on it and rename that tab to be whatever you like. I'm going to call it my list. Then next to it there's a plus sign. If we click on the plus sign, then we can add a new list, which again we can double click to rename, and we can use these lists as a way of organizing our frequency storage. So now I've created two new tabs, one for AM broadcast frequencies, the other one for FM broadcast frequencies. So now I can go back to my original list and I can copy or delete frequencies from that list and then paste them into the new list. Control X will delete a record and then in the new list I can do Control V and paste it in there. Control C is also an option. In fact the commands are just like editing cells in Excel unless of course you're a Mac user. And please note, if you are a Mac user, Command X, Command C, and Command V do not work. You have to use Control X, Control V, and Control C. Now you may be thinking that the functionality of these tabs is somewhat similar to the memory banks we had in SDR Uno, and you'd be correct. 
You may also be thinking, wouldn't it be great if you could import your SDR Uno memory banks into SDR Connect and use them here, which would give you access not only to your own saved memory banks, but other ones that have been saved across the internet. Well, have I got news for you. Simply click on the icon at the top of the frequencies window, navigate to where your memory files are, select the memory bank you want to import, and there it is. Now one thing you might want to notice when you're doing this is first you might want to create a new list and then import your existing memory bank into that new list which you can then rename as previously shown to anything you desire. As I showed previously, double clicking on an entry in the frequency list will retune the radio but there's an additional mode you can get into by clicking the padlock. You're now in edit mode and when you double click on a cell you can edit it. You can change the frequency, you can add some descriptive text, you can even double click on the mode and change that, or you can click on the filter characteristics and change them as well. And finally, you'll notice that an X has appeared next to the tabs at the bottom, and by clicking on an X, you can delete any tab that you want to remove. I think you'll find that the uh, frequency module is extremely versatile, and I think you'll have a lot of fun using it. Well, that concludes my quick overview of SDR Connect. I encourage you to try it out. If you're already using SDR Uno, both programs can coexist on your computer. And if you're on one of the other platforms, now's a chance to really explore the good features of the RSP family of uh, receivers. If you do want to try it out, I encourage you to visit our website, sdrplay.com slash sdrconnect, and there are a whole bunch of helpful videos which go into the features in much more detail than I had time to do today. So thanks for watching and I hope you'll give it a try. 73